Ah, another amazing day on earth. Good morning friends, I am gonna show you what a typical day in Tulum looks like, so come join! Normally I start my days with some breath work, yoga, meditation and intention setting, and sometimes even a little cacao. But today I am so excited to get out because I've heard that Tulum's favorite place, Otti, has reopened after almost two weeks of refurbishment. So let's go have a look! So, we are on our way to check if Otti has reopened, put in a little makeup because you never know. <laughs> I just want to show you my garden, like, look, this is local. It's so beautiful, like, I'm so blessed to have found this place. And we have the sweetest little animals living here also, so let's see if they are out. I think I hear something. Hello! <laughs> what was that? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, they love the camera. They, they love the mic. Oh my god, you're so sweet. Look at you. Best dogs ever. I'm just showing you how beautiful it is. So blessed to live in the tropics. I am gonna go to Playa next week with my friend Lauren to buy some new clothes. Playa, as us local call it. <laughs> or Playa del Carmen. It's the closest place to get like kind of western style of clothes, so it's a luxury to have that option too. <laughs> you wanna be in the camera! Look at her, she's such a little princess. <laughs> You're such a little star. <laughs> Aww. Is it the cutest dog in the world? Hmm? We are out on the streets in La Villeta, which is one of the best areas. I love La Villeta. A lot of expats living here, I should say. And uh, sadly, you would think that the soundtrack of Tulum would be something like this. But instead, it is this. Hello! Hello! Hey, Scooter, hi, Now the reason why they are building so much, I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert in local policies, but I know that <laughs> Mexico was one of few places, maybe the only country that was completely open uh, during the pandemic, which led to a lot of people coming here. So they were like, oh, we need to build a lot because there are a lot of people coming. Um, but I'm not sure that that's sustained now when people can travel to other parts of the world too. Avoir. Just walking here. Wearing my fancy 150 pesos Shadrawi sunglasses. Life's good. And today I'm a little tired because yesterday was Tuesday and Tuesdays is Salsa Night at Palma Central. So everyone comes together like old, young, locals, tourists um, and we dance salsa. <laughs> And it's just super good vibes and no one is creepy, even though people are drinking, it's very different and yeah, it's a positive surprise actually coming from, where am I coming from? <laughs> coming from Sweden, which is a country that if you drink, like people are gonna hit on you and they're gonna be quite sleazy. But that's not the case here in Tulum. People can actually behave. That is my impression at least. Hola! <laughs> we had some mezcalitas, which is made of mezcal. And mezcal is like the national spirit here, like yeah, the spirit that you drink. But I feel like it really has a spirit in the same way as cacao and mushrooms. So it's very interesting. It's not like this kind of dead alcohol, like vodka or other things. And I'm usually not drinking that much. I actually had almost a year drinking not a single drop because I want to do everything with intention. I want to be conscious about why I do things and not just do them because everyone else does them. So it's very important for me to question myself and be in integrity and constantly grow and evolve. And even though I didn't necessarily drink a lot as an overconsumption, I wanted to see do I have any unconscious patterns? Do I drink because I am running away from something or is it just a social lubricant and something I can do for fun but not something that I kind of need in certain situations? So, do you think Atti is open? 
Yeah, it's back on. So happy. Let's go and have a smoothie. So we are at Otti and they have just reopened. Woo, look at this. It's amazing. <laughs> and their specialty is cacao, but I am going to order a smoothie today. I would like a go green smoothie. Yeah, para llevar. Sí. To go. Coconut milk. <laughs> so funny, I was just ordering here at Octay, waiting for my smoothie now, and I'm like so awkward because this is my first ever vlog. <laughs> but this is how I live my life. I always do at least one thing a day that scares me because that's how we grow. That's how we step out of our comfort zone. It's not by sitting and uh, contemplating about doing things, it's by actually going out in the real world, doing the damn thing. So yeah, I hope you take that advice up to heart. At heart. So we are walking back home with a green smoothie. I'm gonna do some promotion, <laughs> not sponsored. I wanted to feature my friend, the golden yogi, in the video, but he was deep into a conversation, so I felt like, not really in the moment. <laughs> Awkward seems to be the topic of today. Why do I have hair in my mouth? So on the agenda for today, I am gonna do some client work because I'm also a copywriter. I am gonna hit the gym at some point. I've been working out quite a lot lately, as you can see. You can't, but trust me. And uh, that's about it. One of my favorite things in the world is cacao. And I just bought this beautiful block of ceremonial grey cacao. It comes from the Tabasco region in Mexico. So I have chopped some up here and we're gonna make a drink of ceremonial cacao. The time has come to drink my cacao and I wanted to share three things with you before I move on with my day. So the first is that cacao has been traditionally used by people in Mexico, for example the Mayans who live here in uh, Tulum in the Quintana Roo region. And uh, they use cacao to ask for advice. So for example if the harvest didn't go as planned, they could ask the cacao spirit, hey, what's up with our crops? And this is something that you can also do today when you work with cacao. You can set an intention and the cacao spirit will help you. It's magical how it works. And the second thing is that cacao is a superfood, especially ceremonial grade cacao because it's very lightly and gently treated. So you have all the nutrients intact. So it contains a lot of these beautiful trace minerals that we're often deficient in in a Western diet, a lot of magnesium that helps relax in your central nervous system. And the third thing that I love with cacao is that it helps me focus during the day. Because when I drink coffee, I don't know about you, but I can get a very, like, almost anxious, jittery all over the place because coffee is a central nervous system stimulant. However, cacao is a cardiovascular stimulant, so it acts on the heart and it helps you get in touch with your emotions and feel a lot of love and compassion throughout the day, but also to focus, to go deep. So it's perfect if you have some creative project that you're working on or if you need to be productive. So cheers to that. The less glamorous side of Tulum, as of life everywhere, is that you also need to dispose of your trash, your garbage. And it's very important if you live in Tulum that you compost your food scraps. And uh, there's my bike, have you seen it? Hey girl! <laughs> what have you done with your ear? Hmm? <laughs> Aww, she's the cutest. We are approaching one of the recycling stations. You can find them a little everywhere in Tulum. Don't forget to recycle your bottles, kids. I think that's the least that we can do as guests on these beautiful lands and also on this beautiful planet. So of course it is important to recycle and to take care of your trash. 
wherever in the world you live, but especially here in Tulum. Because this region contains the largest underwater network in the world, which you can see as the cenotes on the surface. And this is a very fragile system and naturally water also carries information. Water has a lot of energy. So if we pollute the waters that are all under us here, that will inevitably mean that we have these polluted energies that are kind of weird floating around. And then of course it's also for the planet, it's also for nature herself. Because since the garbage here is not managed properly, what happens is that when you throw things away, like in the normal garbage bin, it leaks, it seeps into this underground water system. And it harms all the amazing animals living in the cenotes, such as alligators and turtles. So we don't want to do that. Here is the best coconut place in Tulum. And sometimes you get a little extra coconut meat when you buy an agua de coco. As much as I love Tulum, I mean, I have the best house in Mexico, if not in the Americas. <laughs> Is that it's a very different world, depending on if you are one of the locals, the Mayans, or if you are a tourist coming here to have a good time, or an expat just like myself. And I consider myself at least to be a very real and authentic person. And there are quite some aspects of this place that you can consider to be a bit artificial. <laughs> Let me put it that way. For example, all these beautiful, magnificent places at the beach strip, like the hotels, the beach clubs, it's all powered by diesel engines, meaning that it's polluting a lot. And I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert in the power system here in Mexico. I can imagine that it's quite dirty. <laughs> um, even though the gym where we are going later today, it's powered by solar panels, actually. It kind of bothers me to come to this perfect fantasy world and then it's all going. <laughs> Nature pays the price, so to say. I know that some people consider it hypocritical to even bring it up since I am here. I am part of the problem, but uh, I'm not pretending to have a solution. I just want to bring up that side of Tulum too, because it would feel inauthentic to just be like, oh, everything's perfect. You get coconut flesh <laughs> when you buy coconut water. <laughs> Life's good. It's a cute little store called Sojole, and they have organic greens, and uh, actually better prices than the rest of the loom, I would say. Aquí tenemos frutas, fruit, vegetables, also some homemade stuff. The classic Tulum brownie. So we are buying some naranjas. Classic Tulum, woo! Mira, que bonito! <laughs> also recommend this shop on Calle Siete. My specialty there is a coconut water and a grapefruit juice. Jugo de toronja. Here is my favorite drink if you went a little too hard on the mezcalitas yesterday. Not at all speaking from experience. <laughs> You squeeze two oranges, you add some coconut water and a pinch of salt, and it just gets delicious. Who is that? Hello! <laughs> she loves close ups. <laughs> We have now arrived at the gym, so let's go and sweat. We are now on the rooftop terrace of the gym and I mean magical sunset going on here. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
So, we are back where it all started, in my slightly unmade bed. <laughs> I hope my parents aren't watching. Anyhow, I'm gonna share a story proving that Tulum is magical. Because maybe you've heard that Tulum is an energetic vortex. And what it means is that any energy that you are in gets amplified. So if you are in a negative energy, you can get pulled into this downward spiral. And there's even this infamous expression that Tulum can spit you out. On the other hand, if you are in a positive energy and in a good vibe, you can manifest magic and you can really attract so much goodness. And that's what happened to me. So a couple of weeks ago, I had this beautiful little bracelet with conchas, seashells. And one day it broke. And I thought to myself that I would love to get a new bracelet. But I have a feeling that I won't have to look for it. It will just come to me somehow. And that same afternoon, I went to the beach for a sunset photo shoot. As I made my way back to my bike, a man came up to me. And he tied something around my wrist. This bracelet. And I said, oh, thank you. How much do you want for it? And he replied, nada, es un regalo. And I just looked at it, astounded. And I noticed it perfectly matched the colors of my bag. And I thought to myself, did I just make that up? Did it really happen? But the bracelet was proof that yes, it happened. And I looked after the man to thank him, but he was nowhere to be seen. So I hope that this can show to you that magic is real. The universe is listening to all your desires. And Tulum is here waiting for you. So see you here in Tulum and see you in the next video.